Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. If I do a quick, well, I say quick, I always say quick, comparison of my two current Contras. Of course, one of them is for sale. One of them is definitely not, at least, at least for a while. Um, and I thought I'd give, give some broad comparisons, having played this one a lot, and having, having played this one, you know, a fair amount in the last few days, I feel like I can give some generalities between Horn from the 1960s, which was, yes, almost 70 years ago, right? Now, let me figure this out. 40 years plus oh, about 60 years ago. There we go. Math, not my strong suit, versus a basically brand new design. I'm sure these were designed like 10-ish years ago, but they're about as new as it gets in Contra land. And right off the bat, I have to say that the differences are almost exactly like the differences between bass trombones and modern bass trombones. So something like a 50B2, Bach 50B2 from, say, the 60s, and a brand new modern, you know, Bach with uh, axial flow valves or something like that. They're broadly similar, they're the same instrument, and yet the old instrument has some characteristics that the new one does not, and the new instrument has characteristics that the old one does not. And broadly, like I said, very broadly, the old horn has a more interesting sound with kind of more wool in the sound, it might be a little bit quieter, literally less decibels per input, uh, but a more interesting sound with more overtones in it. So just, let's see if this comes across on camera. There's just an F, just an F by itself. This is with the same mouthpiece, so hopefully it's uh, an equal comparison. They're probably not tuned the same either, so that's not going to help. But again, broadly, I think this is a brighter instrument that is louder. Um, so a lot like modern basses tend to make a little bit more of the higher overtones and sacrificing maybe a few of the mids to make a louder sound that's maybe a little bit a little bit wider, uh, but also brighter. So let's let's play a little bit more. Not playing all the correct notes. I just spent all day playing tenor trombone, of course. this is due to the feedback of these instruments. They're very different because the bell, if nothing else, it's because the bell is so much farther away from my head on this than it is on this. Um, just look at where the, the slide braces are. Okay, I'll put the mouthpieces in the same place. We'll hit the ceiling. And that's how different the bells are. They're like six inches different per instrument. So yes, a lot of that is due to where the bell is. But also, I just feel like it's a little bit quieter, and maybe the term would be a little more covered. Um, so there's more of an interesting sound that might not make as large of a sound. But generally, this sounds really good, and it has a very definite pitch center. That does too, and it's easier to play in almost every way, but this is not like lacking in that regard. Now, let's talk about low range. A lot of that difference there is due to the fact that this is just simply a larger instrument. My old Contra is a 551 bore. Um, the valves are two different bores. I've actually measured them and I can't remember what they are. Um, but 
the simple fact is that these are just larger, the tubing is larger, and the kind of the rest of the instrument it might be a little bit larger, but the fact that the slide starts a lot smaller than this at 585, that at 555, so 0.03 difference in uh, bore size, makes a pretty big difference there. And even though this has modern valves on it, um, these uh, carbon rotors, they're not carbon fiber by the way, I've misspoke a few times now, carbon rotors are just like amazing valves. These are good, these are good, they're just not on the same level. And that's just the simple fact of it. Now let's talk about the extreme low register. is pretty gosh darn good on this instrument. It responds easily, it's got a big sound, but also it's got a nice pitch center to it. And this has just got a bit bigger sound and about the same amount of pitch center, but again, a brighter sound with more of those higher overtones. Again, apologies, I'm not playing these instruments perfectly. I spent all day playing small bore tenor and these feel very strange right now. Let's talk about the high range a little bit, kind of the mid and upper ranges that come up sometimes on contra. <laughs> there in this range and honestly in all ranges on this it feels like a trombone I can just attack I can put the slide in a normal place for F of course and a note comes out and very easily so playing the same upper F scales <laughs> this has a pretty good mid and upper register as well but the intonation is just totally totally different it's not the or i should say it is the expected differences you would think would happen on any instrument the third partial is high the fifth partial is low except everything is exaggerated so again just listen to the difference here <laughs> The difference between C, the upper note I just played, and F, the one that I played first, is very stretched. They should not be that far apart. And this is typical on most trombones. That third partial is a little bit high, but it's really high on this. And you heard I missed the F earlier as well. That F works. Um, but I have to aim in just the right spot where it doesn't want to come out. Now listen to the A above the F that I just played. That's the equivalent of D above the staff on a B flat trombone, which is usually a little bit low on older instruments, on modern Edwards, modern Shires. That's been fixed, you know, for some people, and that plays a lot higher. On this, it is unusably low. Um, you cannot play A in first position. Not that you have to play A a whole lot, but it does move notes like um, A flat, G, and G flat a lot higher up on the slide than you might expect. <laughs> Again, in contrast to the modern Contra, very easy response, and it's, I mean, you know, with no tuner in front of me, that's much more in tune. Um, and then the high C above that. 
It's probably a little bit high on this contra, as you would expect. That's the sixth partial, like high F on a B flat instrument. Is very high on this. Again, these are not notes you like ever get a need on contra bass trombone, but those tendencies that are on most instruments are just exaggerated on this. I'm not sure if that's because of the design of this and it's just kind of a little bit wonky or if it's just because it's long and there's you know 12 feet of tubing here instead of uh, nine feet that all the exaggeration or all the uh, differences are exaggerated. In any case, that range actually does play pretty well on this instrument, especially compared to a lot of like modern, like the Chinese stuff really does not want to play in like the mid and upper registers. This plays very well. Um, it's just that intonation you gotta get used to. Um, what else do we have? So ergonomics, obviously, this, the big problem with this is the diff, or the uh, the distance between the lower tube here and the bell. I'll just put my hand here for reference. My finger's kind of in the middle of the bell and it goes all the way to my wrist. If we look at the leish, it has very nearly the same uh, distance here as a bass does. I'll put my wrist at the bottom tube and you can see my finger goes all the way past the bell. And so that means the bell is not that far away from my hand in relation uh, I, in relation to my hand. What am I trying to say here? And what that means is that this instrument is very left heavy. There's a lot of stuff that's over there and it wants this horn to do this, uh, which is kind of a bummer for ergonomics. Also, of course, we got the double slide grips and super long cork barrels. This distance between kind of the main, well, there's two, of course, but the first brace here and first position is quite large. You can probably just see that compared to on the modern Contra is about what it is on any modern B flat trombone. It's very small. I'm not sure how they do that and keep the slide like intact and not you know, really easy to get out of alignment and stuff, but this feels very normal. Also the difference in lead pipe to first position. So look at this right here. So we have the end of the mouthpiece and first position is more than my hand. It's like almost like a foot difference between my face and where my hand is for first position. Hey cat. Yes, I know we're talking about contrabass trombones. Whereas this, my face and first position, much closer. It feels like playing a B flat trombone. So just those little tiny factors make a huge difference in ergonomics. And the big one, of course, is on the modern contrabass, I get at least five positions. And that's really cool because I get a couple of notes. I can't play on that. One, I get fifth position D flat and A flat, but I also get some other notes like I can play, I think, a B flat on the end of the series with the D valve. So I can play a, a different B flat than the one that I usually play with second valve and first position. And it gives me another note. That's a G, ah, a low G that I cannot play on the old Contra. Just for reference, I just simply run out of slide. I can just barely get fifth position, but it's to the point where I'm extending all the way with the fingertips and it hurts. That's not a position I would use in real life. That's like playing almost eighth position on a B-flat instrument. And the same thing. I just quite can't get that low B-flat. And then of course the G. is maybe a little bit closer than the other notes, but again, that's extended all the way to the point where it's kind of like pulling a, a tendon in my neck because I'm doing this. And it really hurts, I wouldn't do that. So that's a bit of a bummer. You're kind of stuck to a couple positions that you would 
like to have an option for, but you only can play them in one position. Otherwise, these are both really good instruments. I, I just got this out just a little bit ago and started playing, and I was like, oh yeah, this really is not that bad of an instrument, and I can easily play this with other people. I have been playing this with other people, and man, it feels great. It makes a huge sound. It's easy to tune. It's so easy to play, but at my current state of contra playing, this gets me just about as far. Just a little bit harder to play, a little bit more of a covered sound, a little darker, and maybe a little bit less noise per input. Otherwise, it's good contrabass trombone. And yes, it's partially an ad so I can sell this, but like, honestly, <laughs> I thought it was going to be so much worse after playing that so much. Who knows? Um, that's all I got for now. Hopefully that was an informative video. I did hit my face on the back of that because it's so long. And now I'm going to go put some ice on it. That's all I got. Bye-bye.